Welcome back to Tipping Point. I'm your host, Kara McKinney. A bicameral legislature of, by, and for the people, not the career politicians. It hasn't been that way in a while, but that's what it was supposed to be. In the early hours of Saturday morning, California Republican Kevin McCarthy was confirmed as the next House Speaker, but not without a fight. A 15-round brawl between establishment Republicans and America First types like Matt Gates and Andy Biggs ended in some important concessions for the incoming Congress, including a motion to vote on term limits for Congress. Conservative host Jesse Kelly from the first notes this on Twitter, the lion's share of GOP members fought against these concessions, which feature a vote on the four-part Texas border plan, a 72-hour minimum period for reading proposed bills, a pathway called the Jeffersonian motion to deal with speakers who go back on their word or policy agenda, and an end to COVID-19 mandates and funding. Kelly writes, quote, do keep in mind that 90% of the GOP pundit class fought against these things for the last few days. You would have had none of this if they got their way. Same people who supported 15 days to slow the spread, end quote. As you might expect, the new House Minority Leader, Hakeem Jeffries, is criticizing the rules package, saying these measures will undermine national security. Very scary. However, the opposite seems true, creating a constitutional amendment to restrict House terms to six years and Senate terms to 12 years will prevent career politicians from profiting off our demise, such as the officials who are voting for endless war in Ukraine while they hold stocks for those prime defense contractors. What's more, this is a popular check on the legislature's authority. In fact, some polls show that roughly 80% of American voters would like to see term limits for members of Congress. Despite this overwhelming support from voters, Congress has evaded the term limits question for a long time. But there is hope for the new Congress, and McCarthy has an extraordinary opportunity to make his mark as House Speaker. Joining us now to discuss is Micah Beckwith the, Beckwith, the Indiana State Chairman for U.S. Term Limits, coming to us from the state capitol there. Thanks for being here tonight, Micah. Hey, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Great. So let's get the elephant in the room out of the way. How are we to expect Congress to vote to limit their own power here with term limits? <laughs> well, I don't know if we can expect Congress to limit themselves. That's why, while there may be a glimmer of hope with this new Congress, we have 130 House members that have signed the U.S. term limits pledge that says they will support our term limits uh, proposal. I'm not putting a lot of stock that they're actually going to do it. What I'm hoping for is that we will see a Article 5 convention in the Constitution. Our founders knew that this would happen. And so they put a mechanism in there called an Article 5 convention, which would give the states the power to tell Washington how to do their job. And so we're really moving forward with that as our goal. But listen, if they want to you know, term limit themselves and they actually do what they have told us they're going to do, I'm all for that. But I'm kind of expecting that we're going to go to uh, the first ever constitutional convention. That would be very interesting to see play out. And when you look at polls, like Congress does not rate very high in public opinion. Sometimes you see what, like 20, 30 percent, maybe sometimes even lower than that. Not a lot of people are very happy with Congress. And I think there is two uh, main issues people have with Congress. So there are plenty others we could go into, but the two main ones, at least in my opinion, are uh, members, people going into Congress, you know, with how, being worth however much and then leaving Congress being worth a heck of a lot more than they enter Congress with. A lot of it, you know, a lot of issues and allegations of insider trading and stock deals and everything else. Uh, and then the other issue you have, for example, Senator Dianne Feinstein of California, people who might say, you know, what are they doing in Congress? They're even worse cognitively than even Joe Biden. And yet they keep being voted back in and back in and back in. Do you Think that issuing having term limits would at least mitigate those perhaps two worst excesses that we see currently with Congress? I think it would, and here's why. It's because the power of the incumbency is very strong. I mean, they, there's a 90% re-election uh, rate when it comes to incumbents running. And Nancy Pelosi said it best. She said that if there are some districts in America, you could have a glass of water running, and if you just put a D next to its name, the people would vote for the glass of water. And so I think that the power of the incumbency is the thing that we always fight against as the average Joe American. You know, this this is a citizen legislature. That's what our founders believe. Now, the reason there's a two year term in the House is because it was really only designed to be a one term and done kind of thing in the House of uh, House of Representatives. You would get on your horse. You would ride to Washington, D.C. You'd stay there for two years. You'd serve the people of your of your district. You'd come back and you'd pass the torch to someone else to go and now do the same thing. And so it, we've gotten away from that. We've, we've created kings and queens now that think they rule the, the planet and they don't serve the people. And so so I, I think we, this is a must. And, and real quick, I'd like to say that term limits is, is a very bipartisan uh, thing. It's very, there's about an 85 percent 
uh, approval rating of term limits across the country. That's Republicans and Democrats. So I think this is something we can all get behind. And it's interesting because, like, as you were saying earlier, when you read back through the founders and, and uh, that period in American history, it's almost as if serving in the House is almost like jury duty, in essence. It was, you know, you made yourself in your community and now you're giving back by, oh, gosh, darn, you got to go down to, you know, the swamp lands of the Capitol and you got to do your service, do your time, basically, for the betterment of the country. And then you can, you know, get the heck out of Dodge and go back home to do something productive with your life. And now it's completely flipped on its head. Uh, is there any states right now that perhaps offer a, a plan that or a pathway, some framework uh, that maybe show, because, you know, we see our states as uh, laboratories of democracy where, you know, different uh, policies can be experimented with. Are there any right now that offer a framework for what could be done at a national level when it comes to term limits? Yeah, so there are a few states. Uh, we have just over a uh, half dozen states that have signed on to the U, uh, to passing a resolution within their state legislatures that says that says we will support a uh, Article Five convention when it comes to the U.S. term limits pledge. So we have to get a majority of the states uh, to uh, or we have to get 33 uh, states to support this resolution in order to to see an Article Five. Uh, convention triggered within the within the constitutional framework. So so here's here's what you could do if you're listening to this. You could call your state reps and your state senators and say, hey, as our state signed on to the U.S. term limits resolution that we're trying to that we're trying to see uh, limit these these career politicians, and you can begin to push in your state to see this change. And and again, if we get if we get a, uh, a, a enough states to do this, then we will then we'll see an Article Five convention triggered and. And it will it'll be a good day for Americans. I, I really believe we can win this as the people. We just have to know what we're doing and and, and stand stand up to to Washington exactly like our founders uh, envisioned. That we do, Micah. Thanks for dropping by tonight. And thank you for having me.